I am here in beautiful Palm Springs, California with Ducati. Today we are going to test drive the Pikes Peak Multistrada V4. Look at these beauties here. Oh my goodness, I cannot wait. So today I get to take the Multistrada out and we are going to be test riding it on a multitude of types of roads, anywhere from canyons to city streets to highway riding. And we will be going from Palm Springs to Idlewild and all the way around back. Our lead rider for today is going to be Jake Zemke. So very much looking forward to going out with these guys. They're all journalists and they're all really great riders. And I'm over here in the back, so let's go. So as we pull out, the first thing that I want to get a feel for are going to be the clutch and the brake. The clutch lever is hydraulic, it's very nice and smooth. I can already see um, that even in traffic, this isn't going to be an issue. It's not hard to pull in at all. The friction zone is really easy to grab. The brakes are wonderful as well. These are Brembo's and they are nice and grippy. Uh, they do have an initial bite, but certainly nothing like you would see on a super sport. So this is definitely a much more smoother, progressive break that I can really work with entering into the corners, even on the street and canyon rides. The original Multistradas came with three power modes. That was urban, touring, and sport. Uh, Ducati has added a race mode with this Pikes Peak Edition. Obviously, that is why the bike is so sought after. So starting off, you have urban mode, which puts the bike in low power mode and produces 115 horsepower. With this mode, you will automatically engage full traction control and ABS. Uh, to be honest, I didn't even bother putting the bike in this power mode at all to test it. I can see this mode being really useful in very heavy wet conditions, uh, possibly ice, something like that, but I just personally didn't feel the need to really put the bike in that mode. I ended up starting out using touring mode, which bumps the horsepower up to 170, which is the full power of the motor. However, your power delivery is very smooth and on a controlled curve. Honestly, it's akin to what you would feel on an inline four Japanese machine, which really surprised me because instantly the bike felt very much like my machines. I felt incredibly at home with that power delivery feel. I could move my fingertip just ever so slightly and control that throttle down to the millimeter and I could smoothly feel that response. Um, so that was very, very nice in the city, especially in traffic when we were going bumper to bumper, moving in between cars and, and weaving around. You really want that type of smooth control uh, instead of a very just brute, abrupt force where you're having a hard time controlling it and the bike is herking and jerking you around. So I feel for something like a touring machine like this, it's a really great mode. As soon as we got out of the city and into the canyons, I switched the bike into sport mode, which instantly gave me a much more responsive feel. The power uh, on was much snappier, and I really feel that that V4 Gran Turismo engine really starts to come alive there. And speaking of the engine, it is very light. It's at 147 pounds, and you really, really start to see why this 1158cc machine is named the sportiest dual bike ever. So as soon as we started to open it up and carve into the corners, I mean, the bike felt amazing. It really came alive. Even with the sharper power delivery, I still felt this machine just was really smooth very joyful to ride. It instantly brought a smile to my face. Um, I was pleasantly surprised. I think I was expecting something a little more abrupt and rougher, but this was a beautiful ride. The feel was just phenomenal and very confidence inspiring, to be honest. So the latest and greatest that Ducati added is the race mode. 
This delivers an even more raw and direct throttle response, making this hands down the sportiest Multistrada to date. Um, the mode also unlocks full racetrack capabilities and is ideal for a choice of experienced riders that really know how to handle their machine and want to unlock all of the exclusive performance that this Ducati has to offer. So in this mode, you can specifically tailor everything, all of the electronics that uh, Ducati's offered here. So in your preferences, the braking system, ABS, and yes, you can disable the cornering ABS rear wheel so that if you want to, you can back it in, you can slide it. As you can see here, Josh Heron has been testing this out for me all day. <laughs> I am not skilled to do this enough, so I am not gonna attempt it but I've got to see him do it plenty of times in front of me and um, he's definitely had a smile on his face all day. So all of these modes are really great and all, but I think the most important thing to note here is how easily accessible they are. Uh, the TFT screen is nice, bright, large. You can actually tilt it, so if you have a glare, you can move it up and down. Accessing all these modes while you're riding is very, very easy. Ducati placed the control button right under your left thumb and made it extremely intuitive so that you know you can just glance down at the screen without really taking your eyes off the road too much. And they actually use iconography instead of specific numbers for your modes and controls. So they made it very simple, intuitive, and you grasp it really, really quickly. And speaking of controls, I think my favorite thing about this bike was the adaptive cruise control. Now, I've used cruise control on a motorcycle before, but I've never gotten a sample of that adaptive feature. So this was something that really surprised me because I wasn't sure how well this would work in reality, and it blew me away. Once you set your pace, then you have three options where you can set your distance from the vehicle in front of you. And the way it does this, it has sensors on the front and the sides of the bike. So as somebody comes into your lane, the bike senses this and slows down instantly. Now it's not herky-jerky, um, and obviously I wouldn't suggest using this in gridlock traffic, but as you can see in this fast moving yet high volume environment, this worked flawlessly for me. I was able to adjust my speed with the buttons using my left hand and accelerate, deaccelerate, and also just let it run and adapt the distance all by itself. As you can see here, even moving from lane to lane, it instantly picks it up. So if I set my speed to 85, it would hold it at that. If a car came in front of me, it would slow down instantly to match that speed and vice versa. If the car moved over and there was a gap, the bike would instantly go to 85 and it would continue on cruising at that speed. Another thing you may notice here is my mirrors keep lighting up and that is actually not my blinker, that is blind spot detection, which is all new technology on this bike. This is the only bike that has it on the market as of right this moment. And honestly, it was very, very useful on the highway. Um, it's just really great built-in peace of mind if you travel a lot on your motorcycle, commute a lot, especially on the highway. This is definitely something that will give you just that little bit of extra peace of mind and protection while you're out there. Okay, so really quick for all of my vertically challenged friends that always ask, I have to answer this question about seat height. Obviously, this is a very tall touring bike. Uh, so I am five foot eight inches tall with a 32 inch inseam. The standard seat that comes on this bike is 33 to 33.8 adjustable inch seam height. Now, I could barely tippy toe on one side with that regular seat. And the reason for that is, is because the seat is very wide, so it's very nice and comfortable. So getting on and off the bike isn't as much as an issue as standing it up, which for most people isn't really that big of a concern. But for me, because I have some foot issues and I'm not very stable on my feet, that is a huge concern for me personally. So I got really lucky because Ducati had one of these Multistratas outfitted with their aftermarket seat which is a lower seat 
and that has an inseam of 31.5 inches. So with that seat, still remember it is wider, I was able to tippy toe on either side or flat foot one sided very comfortably. So that made me a lot calmer about taking this bike off and turning it around uh, on turnarounds and going into gravel because it was definitely slick in some areas and my feet were sliding around. Also major bonus for the aftermarket seat, it does have a seat warmer which I loved and actually used when we went through Idlewild because it was about 38 degrees out there. So it kept my core temperature warm and it was wonderful. Okay, so we are back from our ride today, probably put about four or five hours on this bike, went all around the canyons, had an absolute blast, obviously first and foremost, but I would like to mention that I came into this with no expectations. I've actually never ridden any of the other Multistradas, so I wasn't quite sure what it would offer me. Um, and I also came in thinking, oh, well, how much better could it be from other sport touring bikes in the industry? Well, I was really blown away. First and foremost, this is a big bike. It's well over uh, 550 pounds wet. Uh, it's got over a five gallon tank, so that's a lot of added water weight to it. Um, and it's tall. So I was very nervous about taking this out and of course, you know, pulling over, turning around, actually, you know, going in gravel. These were all things that I am not great with. So I was a little nervous. And I'm gonna tell you, all of those nerves melted away. For as heavy as this bike is, it's incredibly nimble in the corners. It flicks back and forth. Uh, the bars are really wide, which is something I adore. Half the time, I don't even have to hold them, just push and pull. It's, oh my gosh, it was amazing. It just flips into the corner so effortlessly. I was shocked. I think that is probably my favorite thing about this bike is how easy it was to ride in the twisties. And for me, that's huge. That's majorly confidence inspiring. So for someone that shies away from large, heavy bikes, for me to say now that I could totally own this and would love to have it is huge. So the counter rotating crankshaft is the key ticket here with this machine. That's what uh, makes it feel much lighter in the corners. Just flipping it side to side, it feels effortless. Uh, and even in really tight chicanes, I'm telling you, it's effortless. And that's not to say that you can't feel the bike's weight when you're traveling straight on a road. Yes, you can feel that this is a heavy bike, but as soon as you get going and start rolling and going through those corners, it feels like a really nimble and light machine. Another big change for this Multistrada is the addition of a 17 inch front wheel. So this now gives you the opportunity to use some of the highest and best performing tires on the market. This Pikes Peak Edition comes with the Pirelli Diablo Rosso 4 tires, which is one of my favorite all around tire for great commute wear on the highway, as well as capabilities to really carve up in the twisties and canyon rides. Um, really all around amazing high performance tire. The rims themselves are also maraschini forged aluminum wheels, so they're gonna be much lighter. The centrifugal force is less, so you are definitely gonna feel that in the transition from corner to corner. Well guys, thanks for joining me on my Pikes Peak Multistrada V4 review. I really appreciate you tuning in, so just drop me some comments, questions, concerns, anything you want to know down below. And thank you for joining me. Enjoy the ride.